Hi guys, welcome to the vlog. And technically this is a vlog. I'm going to mark it that way just for consistency's sake. But in reality, it's a video response. It's actually in response to a video a friend of mine posted earlier this month. And, uh, well, let's see how to, how to explain this guy. Hmm. Well, the easiest way to put it is you might know who he is already. He is the man once known as Apollo Z Hack from That Guy with the Glasses. You know, Reviewer vs. Saga, One Eye, has a thing for Dutch angles that I don't quite understand. These days he's doing his own thing. He's doing this really odd thing where he actually goes by his name. I, I don't know, sounds crazy to me. But he's doing his own thing over at Third Act Films here on YouTube. And it's a tokusatsu vlog series called Monstrosities. <laughs> Now, he talks everything from his favorite toku movies, Godzilla included, to uh, thrift store finds that he's made recently. He's very good at what he does. He's very insightful, very engaging with his videos. So, when you're done here, go check him out. This is probably posted in response to his original video, so you should see a link somewhere below for the original video that spawned this. And you've probably guessed by the vlog title above this video, I'll go ahead and repeat it here. The whole premise is, how would you do Common Rider in the USA? And that's a really good question, isn't it? Because we've seen it done a few times, and I don't think it was done properly either. I mean, of course we know the debacle that was Masked Rider. Uh, all of its terrible editing and half-acidness. But, uh, honestly, I wasn't a fan of Dragon Knight either. I mean, to me, it really fell apart halfway through when they tried to introduce the mirror counterparts. There's a uh, new Ryuki, and now here's Ryuki of Dragon Knight, and then there's an, there's Onyx now. They made Onyx like the main hero because they like the suit better. It's not. It's. Uh, I could rant on for hours over that. Remind me to rant for a few hours about uh, about it later on. But for now, we're sticking to his question: How do you adapt Common Rider for America? How would you do it? Maybe not successfully. This is kind of a fanboyism thing. But it's an interesting topic of discussion. It actually gets a few things churning in the brain. Uh, and I, I wish I was more insightful because I can't answer that in the way that he can. Because I'm, I'm really not a movie buff. Like, I can enjoy a movie. I can go to a movie and love it, but... I'm not going to remember who the lead actor was. I'm not going to remember who directed it. So I can't tell you, okay, you know, I, I can't tell you whether or not I'd want, you, you know, uh, I can't even think of anyone off the top of my head. I can't tell you who I'd want playing the main character, and I can't tell you who I'd want directing it. My brain just doesn't tick that way. I remember voice actors and voice directors, and no one who does on-screen work. So, unfortunately, I can't give detail. When you pose this question to me, my head thinks story-based, because somewhere in my head, I'm still a story writer by nature, and I kind of I kind of think, how do you tell a story that's common writer, that's very common writer, that's still going to strike an American audience? Well, uh, the first thing, um, uh, Matt said it in his video, and I agree with this, that the Heisei stuff doesn't need to be touched. Uh, aside from the fact that it's going to be harder to adapt because the stories are more complex, uh, you really need to go to the Showa era to get some of the nuances that Kamen Rider is supposed to be all about. So, we start there, and I'm going to disagree with him at one part, where, he's, where his idea is to create a new writer. Not Ichigo, but vaguely like Ichigo. And I do want to create someone vaguely like Ichigo too, but I would prefer to have more of that Ichigo element. Definitely updated, definitely like modernized, and I hate to use the word Americanized, because when I hear Americanized, I think CGI Godzilla, and that ain't pretty. But 
like definitely more modern. So it's not just a guy in like a black leotard and like a catcher's pad, you know. You know, you know, give him armor, give him a you know rougher look, not too rough, because that's one of the big things. Um, because they did modernize or Ichigo, the original Common Rider before. It was called Common Rider the First, and it was. Uh, how do I put this mildly? Unfreaking watchable. Uh, boring. It had the wrong idea. It tried to ground it completely in reality to the point where characters aren't even transforming. They're just kind of there in suit and then they just put the helmet on and it, it looked crap. You can't go too gritty. You can't go like Batman gritty because I feel you you lose a lot of the camp value that lets you play with it. You lose a lot of the self awareness. It needs to have. It needs to be more of a playground style where you can have these super technological elements, but you can still have some levity to the movie. You know, so it's not like super gritty, but it still has some kind of reality to it. I'm thinking more along the lines of not Batman, but Iron Man. You know, somewhere in there where it's okay to have these elements that are very comic bookish, very cartoonish, but it's still there. It's still in the this world where we live. So you get you kind of get the best of both worlds that way. And the other thing I would do is I wouldn't focus it on the Common Rider, not until like the third act. Uh, if you want a model for that, I'm thinking V for Vendetta, where you start, where you get to really, see, you get to see the Common Rider in the first act, and then later in the first act, you finally you get to see him out of suit. You don't reveal it right away. Kind of, in my head, I kind of want to play with that a little bit. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's something you delve into and get, you know, start getting nuances in, in Act Two. And somewhere in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I, you know, I'm thinking I want Nigo in the in there too. So kind of the linchpin to the story, like the big revelation that kind of sets up the third act. You know, to bring the hero down and kind of break a few break a few connections he's made and build him back up again. You, you know, to take out the what you know whatever villain. See, I can't get a story. I can't get an idea like this without going. How would I have set up a story? Where are the characters? What are they doing? Where, you know, what are they dealing with? Why are they involved in this? Because that's the other thing. You need a reason for a guy dressed as a grasshopper to exist in this world. You know, and that's the big thing. Like, uh, this is kind of a cliche, but I kind of feel like you have to make a character a reporter just because they're the type that noses around into these situations a lot. And I know it's the Ninja Turtle thing, it's the Superman thing, and in a way it's also the Spider-Man thing. But it does help. You know, it does help move the plot along. And the way you mix it up is uh, tabloid. Because when you think of this, a man dressed as a grasshopper riding on a motorcycle beats up a man dressed as, say, a bat, since it's one of the original one, one in common writer the original villains either have to be a bat or a spider it's traditional they break that a lot lately but there you go that's that's what the tradition is so it's a man bat versus a man hopper and you think the new york times is going to front page that uh uh that's weekly world news for you so you you have this like element of levity already in the fact that it's just this crazy tabloid that's just like throwing stories out. It's like, this is the stuff they make up, you know, after, you know, a four-week sugar binge. And here it is really happening. They have photos of it, and they have proof of it. And they have people who are more curious than just, you know, the things they usually just Photoshop and paste onto the front page. You have elements of those classics, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of go cliche in that element of the story, because you need to bring a little bit of the familiar into this. Like, I want Kamen Rider to have his traditional elements. I want him to have a little bit of mystique to him. 
which is why I go the V for Vendetta route, where you really don't learn anything about him until like late in the until like like back end of the second act. Um, and then you and uh, but and he needs a little and he needs uh, he needs the element of tragedy because that's the whole idea of Common Rider is that he's separate from humanity because of what he's become, you know. And there's this sadness behind the hero. You know, that's an element you don't even get a lot in modern comic books. You know, in, in modern superhero stuff. You know, like, you, you get a little from the Batman, but, you know, not not to the degree a common writer is supposed to. But you bring a little of that element in. A little bit of that familiar area. So, yeah, you can be cliche about it, but as long as you're self-aware, it's okay. You know... Uh, and again, for the V Vendetta, I'd make I'd make the love interest like the main focus for at least the first half of the movie. When you, then you start to find out who he is outside of the suit. You find out you start getting touches of who the bad guy is. You know, may, you know maybe it's not uh, you know maybe the guy they think is this vigilante hero because everyone knows the Batman, so maybe it's the richest guy in town. Well, he probably the one holding the purse strings for whatever version of Shocker that this is going to be. You know, it's, it's weird, to, it's, it's weird, it's weird for me to say, like, I want to play with the cliches, but at the same time, I want to break them. You know, like, the billionaire, I want to be the bad guy. You know, I want him to be the one behind this, because he's the one who can, and maybe not the, the great leader of Shocker, but, you know, so, you know, certainly the first big foe, you know, this is an American movie franchise. We got to set it up for at least three movies, right? So, can't take out the big bad yet. Uh. So, yeah, this, the you know, the kind of elements I would want in a movie like that, you know, um. You know, a little bit more, and you know, it's not Iron Man, so it's it has to be more practical when it comes to the fights, you know. It's, you know, it's got to be a, it's got to be a good martial arts director who's doing the fight choreography because you know a common writer isn't a guy who goes around blowing things up and firing cannons and lasers everywhere you know especially for kind of going to the classic writers it's like just someone who's like really freaking powerful and can really take out these guys you know with just his fists and feet you know if you do a writer kick in the movie uh, it's got to look like it, you know, it's got to look like it could take down a building. So it's got to be someone who's really good at the fight choreography and cinematography doing this. Because you can't rely on the huge special effects. You know, and you got to make it, like, believable. Like, you know, there should be, like, a scene where he's battling just normal thugs. You know, maybe he stops a bank heist or, or, or uh, you know, the other cliches. The woman in the alley and the purse snatcher. Just let him, you know, let the audience know. Uh, he, just because he's not wearing a cape and flying around the city or swinging on webs does not mean that this guy is a pushover. You know. See, as I, you know, as I, as I sit here, you know, as I sit here, like, you can't throw me a bone like that without my brain just kind of running off with it, you know? I, you know, in my head, I've got the entire, like, staff of the tabloid laid out. I've got who I want the perspective to be. I've got the ending in my head. You know, you know, if he's, you know, this common writer is wearing a scarf, which he should, I wanted to have a little bit more significance, you know, you know, set up something for uh, sequel bait, you know, uh, what type of villains, I, you know, what type of villains I'd want, the connections about, you know, why, uh, why our new version of Ichigo is out to get these guys, you know, how his origin came to be, why they're after, you know, why Shocker would be after the the reporter, what connection she has to, you know, uh, Ichigo and Nigo in this case. Which, I don't know what you'd call the two. You can't call them one and two. I know, I know that's like the direct translation, but for some reason that just doesn't have the, doesn't have the, imp <laughs> the punch to it or the, the impact, you know. I don't know, like, but my head has this way of just kind of like taking ideas, like a six-year-old kid on sugar, just running around with it, just throwing it everywhere he can. 
So maybe I should just cut this short while I've got some type of sense to this. God, I, I almost want to type it out. I'm not going to do anything with it, but I kind of want to just kind of like type it out just to see how far I could take this. So I, I guess I just gave myself a rainy day project. So in the meantime, however, uh, you know, either uh, post in the comments or, you know, better yet, better yet, you turn on your webcams, turn on your little cam, you know, turn on your iPhone camera, do whatever, and go to Matt's video and post a video reply of your own. Let's see how many people actually have our ideas of how Common Rider would work in America. Not just story, you know, if you, you know, if you don't do a storyline, you know, tell me the actors, you know, do you want a Ryan Reynolds to do, you know, the main, our main hero, uh, you know, uh, God, let's see. This is, you know, this is the bad part. It's like, I could, you know, I can't even name, like, actors I want to see as Ichigo. Ugh. Yeah, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a story-minded guy, so maybe, I'm probably not the best one to answer this question. But I did want to raise attention to the video, and I did want to see how many other people had these ideas. So, uh, record your replies, uh, link them to Matt's video, not mine. I want him, you know, since the, his, this is his idea, I want him to see it. And I want you guys to see what he's about, because the guy does good stuff. So there's my cheap plug for the week. Um... Things are still chaotic here. For people who have seen my Facebook fan page, uh, you'll know what's going on around here. I'm planning big things for December, but I'm not going to announce them officially until I'm positive that I'm going to be able to pull it off. So you probably won't even know it until December 1st rolls around. So uh, with all luck, I'll be able to pull that off, and I'll be able to get back to some honest-to-God reviews soon. So... Stay tuned. As always, plenty more coming.